Hello and welcome to the interview. I'm speaking with Rukshana Nanakara, the Deputy Executive Director of Transparency International Sri Lanka Chapter. Rukshana, welcome to the program. Uh, we're just after a, a presidential election in Sri Lanka, concluded on the 26th. Uh, we have a new executive. But Transparency International has done, uh, at least uh, published a number of reports uh, throughout the course of the elections, suggesting that there were very, very serious concerns about the nature in which state resources were used and, if I may add, abused. Um, what was the nature of this uh, in the election campaign period? The general principle is that any public property uh, belongs to the public of the country. And whether the candidates of any election have a right to use that uh, uh, property or not is uh, the, uh, it's not, I mean, it's not a question to begin with. It's yeah. not acceptable. Yeah. Uh, to say that any candidate can use it mm. uh, for their for their political campaign, mm. because normally even if you have the control over public property or not, I mean, obviously if you are the governing party at a particular period, you tend to have the control over the public property. But still, the principle is when you compete in an election, you are representing your political party, mm. not your government. Mm. In that case, though you have control over the public property, even at that p uh, particular point, you cannot use the taxpayer's property mm. for your benefit. Mm. But unfortunately, what we have been seeing in the last few elections, and uh, particularly uh, a horrendous use of public property, in the last presidential election, mm. 2010. Mm. So I think this is a blatant disregard to the basic principles of the public property belongs to the public, not to a particular party or any private entity. Now this has many dimensions. You've, uh, you've uh, published uh, what you can gain from the public domain or as to the nature of uh, expenditure with regards to the uh, campaigning on broadcast media domestically. Uh, on the abuse of uh, transportation, logistics, resources. Uh, where has the most money been spent on in that sense of, of taxpayers' money uh, in, 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 in the use of uh, public So resources? I have to say we are talking in a context where we don't have right to information in this sure, law. Sure, sure. Yeah. So in that context, we have to see you know, what kind of information that we can right, so get. So it's an incomplete record. Yeah, it in, is in kind that's... of an incomplete yeah. record, yeah. and the actual expenses could be much, much higher than sure. what we have ob uh, managed to uh, obtain. Yeah. Uh, particularly, we have to see in Sri Lanka, we don't have uh, a, a, a law, a legal basis to get information on political party mm. uh, funding. Mm. So we could see there's a huge sums of money, millions of uh, rupees have been spent on advertising campaign. Mm. So now you can see there is, uh, I get the two principal candidates, the General Fonseca and uh, 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 Rajapaksha's campaign. And you could see huge amount of money has been spent on both the candidates campaign. So people in this country, and if they are going to be elected as their president, yeah. do have a right to know who yeah. is funding yeah. their uh, political party campaigns. Mm. That's one principle. The second principle is, as a matter of good governance and transparency, mm. people of, the, of this country uh, have a right to know whether public money has been used for their political party campaigning. Mm. Because as I said, the principle is that it is a public money which is to be used for the benefit of the public, mm. not for any party or a, uh, a private entity. Mm. So uh, we could see millions of money have been used and the sources of those money for these campaigns have not been divulged. That's one aspect of it. And even the information that we have got is the, uh, 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 the information that we obtain through local print and uh, broadcast, uh, 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 television uh, and radio, electronic yeah, media. Yeah. Uh, so that went up to 380 million only for one particular party uh, campaign and then of course General Salad Fonseca's campaign was uh, much lesser than that. So huge money has been spent. But of course we don't... Rupees. Million rupees. rupees yeah. 300, nearly 380 yeah. million rupees. Yeah. But we don't question the fact that they cannot spend that kind of money. But of course being a third world developing country yeah. and okay. people who are going to be, you know, give benefits to the people yeah. are paying huge amount of money and then of course people should have a right to know mm. how the money is being gained for mm. these political parties. Now, now you, ha you had a special program, doing what, what is it called, PPP? PR. We have a program called Program for the Protection of Public Property. Right, which ran during the campaign uh, period. Which started on the day the nomination was, uh, right. nominations were handed over yeah. and then it went up to the 27th January. Right. What we looked at was uh, basically the abuse of state resources, 
by the principal uh, the candidates, but it was of, uh, uh, mainly the principal candidates uh, uh, who were abusing resources in their campaign. I want to come back to the substantive nature of the reports mm -hmm. later on because uh, there, were, there was a report, if I recall correctly, that also uh, suggested that our time uh, on state media in particular, and it, as well as the, 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 the quantity of space given to uh, 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 candidates was hugely skewed. I want to come back to that later. But maybe a more difficult question, Rukshana. You see, we've gone into these elections on the 26th of January in a sense, in full knowledge of what you've produced. You haven't kept it secret. You have disseminated it in all three languages. Uh, these are facts that the voters knew when they uh, uh, elected the new president on the 26th. Uh, are you satisfied that the Sri Lankan voter takes these issues as seriously as you do in Transparency International Sri Lanka? Or is it, is it, is it a non-issue? Is it a non-issue that only you are championing, uh, rightfully so perhaps, but for the larger voting population, uh, not that much of a concern? I think, Sanjana, you are raising the question how the democratic process operate in Sri Lanka. Yeah. And to what extent Sri Lankan voters in generally uh, make a, an informed choice is a big question. Mm. Uh, or do they? Uh, do they? Yeah. But I think when you uh, talk about informed choice or informed decisions or informed discussion, that extend to the voters as well as uh, uh, political party campaign as yeah. well. Yeah. If you look at the main campaigns of the two principal candidates, we're just wondering to what extent they are engaging in an informed uh, campaign, mm. to what extent they talk about uh, the problems of the youth in this country, to what extent they talk about environmental issues in this country, to what extent in detail they mm. talk about economic aspects of the country, mm. to what extent they talk about uh, uh, particular sector problems in the country. Mm. And I think to a large extent, even one-to-one -one debates that we have seen on TV mm. have failed to address any of these but issues, this is including the, the ethnic issue in the no, country. Granted, yeah. But this is the thing, you know, it can be argued, uh, counter-argued rather, that they are not engaging the issues because the public uh, the voting public is not concerned about those issues. So it's a chicken before the egg kind of scenario mm -hmm. with one feeding off the other. I mean, can the public, for example, do you see a scenario where the public can say to all these candidates, listen, I mean, this is, uh, this is nonsense what you're talking about. We need to know what the real issues are. So please give us what you think about these issues that you have enumerated. Do you see that, that lack of a public call and holding these, uh, these, these candidates in any election also accountable for what they say and, and, and you know, calling for that information, the lack of that, uh, also results in what you have just said. Uh, definitely. I think normally in a country like Sri Lanka, people tend to fathom things that they can easily uh, understand yeah. or comprehend. Yeah. But to a large extent, if they don't see, yeah. I mean, as I said, we are in a context where right to information is not guaranteed. There's no legislation. Right? Yeah. There's yeah. no legislation. Yeah. And then we talk about, to a large extent, things on speculation also. Because, yeah. I mean, this is the inevitable result when we have this kind of culture. So. People also, when the, I mean, I don't think it shouldn't, there should be a discussion when huge sums of money has been misappropriated, when huge amount of state resources have been misappropriated by the candidate, mm -hmm. there should be a discussion. Mm -hmm. But that's why I said even the public, to a large extent, has mm -hmm. failed, I mean, report after report of ours, have failed to see the discussion taking or uh, uh, focusing on those issues. Mm -hmm. But rather, our priorities have become uh, rather mudslinging or you know the petty issues in politics. Yeah. So I think public, to a certain extent, know about it, mm. but I don't know whether public demand enough mm. that kind of discussion from our representatives, which is unfortunate reality. Because we have seen in the last elections people who have questionable characters getting elected with huge number of votes yeah. to our uh, parliament as well as to provincial. So council. is democracy then in Sri Lanka is a larger question. I mean, but you know, is it more emotive? Do we? Do we select our candidates based on their looks, uh, height, uh, physical appearance? Uh, given what you said, we certainly don't seem to be concerned too much about the issues. I think, uh, of course, we don't, but I think it's a process. Yeah. So I, uh, it 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 will come uh, as we as we evolve with our democracy. But until that evolution takes place, yeah. all the work you're doing really is not getting any traction, is it? Yeah. But I think we have to continue with our work, yeah. irrespective, because yeah. I was just wondering if we haven't had these reports mm. issued during the election time, you know, how would you record that? Mm. You know, I was mm. always thinking our work, you minus it, mm. and that's nothing. Mm. So that's why 
it's not only Transparency International who should mm. be talking about corruption in this country mm. or the use of public property during the election time. Mm. I believe there be there should be more organizations to talk about it. Mm. Right? Mm. When we talk about it, when we engage in that kind of discussion, and of course things will get exposed, and then people have more information. And I think to a large extent in our education system also, Sanjana, unfortunately, mm. have not trained yeah. uh, us to engage in a uh, informed discussion. Mm.